It's kit unboxing day. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I've got the brand new Simon Says Stamp Kit to unbox for you. I'll show you all the things and then I will make one, two, three, four, five cards and we will see what shakes out. I will have timestamps in the YouTube description box if you wanna jump around or go back to something that you wanted to see again. But for now, let's get into the unboxing. That video is coming up next. Commence the unboxing. Oh, look at that. We have a little salvaged patina embossing glaze. Ooh, okay, I'm taking this out. Let's get this out of the way. You are going to get one of the Simon's Stamp Zipper Pouches. These are wonderful for keeping your kits. And in fact, I'm going to show you before this video is done, where I am storing my bags and my kits. But we'll set that aside for now. And let's get everything out. Ooh, here is a look at the March 2023 kit, and this is called A Happy Hello. A Happy Hello, and oh my goodness, first things first, sugar sustenance, which we love. You are going to get a mini distress embossing ink cube. Well, I don't know if that's new. I don't, I don't think I've ever used a distress embossing ink. Well, this is very exciting. So I'm looking forward to trying that out for sure. And again, we have the salvage patina in the embossing glaze. All right. You are going to get a Tide Pool ink pad, and this is a gorgeous blue. I love this color. Full-size pad, so if you've never tried the positively saturated inks or you don't have the whole collection, hopefully that is going to be a happy thing. <gasps> Next, oh, let's get our scissors. You are going to get hot hands. Now, what are hot hands? Oh, hot hands can be used when you're embossing things. Hot hands can be used when you're picking up hot foil plates, anything that requires something with heat, especially embossing. It does come in a lot of fun colors, but in this kit, it is the teal hot hands. Or you can just go around the house and pinch people. You are going to get a die that just says happy wishes. Oh, and this is a word and shadow. Word and shadow happy wishes, which really could go for anything, right? Birthday or any celebration. That is so cute. These come tabbed and you just use wire snips or uh, I'll show you when I cut this apart. You can cut them out and then you have your word die and shadow layer. And that's actually a really nice size. What a great die. Oh, I love an all purpose. All right. You're going to get one metallic white USA2 envelope. We always like to have a little envelope here or there, right? And I'm gonna have you close your eyes for just a second while I flip the stamp set over. You are going to get one sheet of the Craft Consortium double-sided bunnies paper. Isn't that sweet? Just little bunnies in the grass and more bunnies in the grass. That is really sweet. Okay, bunnies over there. Ooh, look at this. You are going to get 12 double-sided sheets of the Simple Stories Wildflower 6x8 paper. Oh my goodness. Now, Simple Stories, they make, so oh, and it's all tabbed together. Oh gosh. Okay, let's take a look. You know what? Oh, okay, we're going to go through like that. Look at that. Okay, that's beautiful. I love Simple Stories patterns. I think they are so lovely. Oh my goodness. Oh, that could be a large uh, image for a five by seven card. How fun would that be? Oh, that's cute too. Here, I'll lift that. Look at that beautiful pattern. Are those cats or tigers? Oh, that's funky. <gasps> I love this vibe because it's vintagey, but it also kind of has a graphic feel, like not 100% vintage. This is beautiful, live and let grow. Mm. Oh, those florals are beautiful. Yep, yep, we're gonna make, we're gonna make something with floral, floral cardstock for sure. Oh my gosh, look at how fun that pattern is. Beautiful. This, and this is a lot of paper. Ooh, that's cool too. 
And of course, any one of these, you can cut those down. Look at how cute that is, thinking of you. What a cute card that would make. Mm -hmm. Like just cut it down. Hello there, friend, isn't that sweet? And again, that cool pattern. And then on the back, that is a fantastic pad of paper. So if you like getting pattern papers in kits, this is wonderful. Okay, time to look at the stamp set, which is the namesake for the kit. And this is called Happy Hello. Let's flip this over. Oh my goodness. So this is funky and beautiful. You've got this beautiful bird pattern in a heart. You've got flower builders in this extremely cool graphic look. Thank you, friend. Happy birthday. Thank you. Consider this a paper hug. Sending love and support. Oh, sending you a happy hello. Just because thinking of you, this is funky and cool. It's got this huge border that you could do, little swirly dirlies. Oh my goodness, that is very, very cute. Oh, I love it. All right, setting that aside. And the last thing we're going to look at is the cardstock that you will get in the kit. You are going to get one sheet of Simon Says Stamp Peacock. You are going to get one sheet of Simon Says Stamp Smoke and one sheet of Nina Solar White Classic Crest in the 110 pound, which is my go-to card stock for any card base and most of my card projects. But that is a look at all of the goodies in the kit. Oh my goodness, hot hands, happy wishes. I don't really know where to start. Seriously, I don't, this is a lot uh, to take in and think about. Let's just kind of, I try to make it pretty. I am going to let this percolate, right? As I am wont to do. But I'm also gonna show you really quickly what I've been doing lately, and that is this. I have been taking the bags that my kit come, comes in. I'm taking a piece of just removable tape, right? Post-it tape. I've been popping it onto the bag. This is, this is new. And then writing the details, right? So I'll go March, 2023 and the name and that way when I want to go back and find my kit I am now keeping them in my closet in a little rainbow weave basket and I learned about this from the amazing Nicole Spore who shared that uh, on her Instagram and I immediately had to go get one because I thought this would be great going forward for keeping my kit contents together until most of them are exhausted. And then of course, you can easily take off the low tack tape and use this for something else. So I just wanted to show you that. I promise I will have a studio tour. I just have not been able to find the time to focus on how I want to share my new space, but rest assured it's coming. Now I will percolate and we'll get started with our first card. For my first card, I am going to start out with success and simplicity. Now here's the thing, don't ever think that a simple card isn't going to be beautiful. Look at this. Okay, I'm gonna pull some of this pad apart because these little cards, these are so beautiful and simple. So I am going to grab my paper trimmer here and I am literally going to make a card with one, two, three things, and I think it's gonna be so cute. First, I'm going to cut my Nina Solar White right at four and a quarter. That look like four and a quarter. All right. And that will be my note card, and I will set this aside for another project. I am also going to cut my gray, the smoke. This is one of my favorite colors from Simon Says Stamp. They have smoke and fog and they are such nice grays. I'm going to do this, but then I'm also going to cut it into another panel like that. So I have one USA 2 that's four and a quarter by five and a half. Let's set these aside. And now I just have to cut this friend. So let's get it lined up all right as close as we can, three inches, and cut. And this is four inches, right? Well, I guess I'll come up just a little bit like that. 
and cut. So now I have my panels and isn't that so sweet? Now it is not heavyweight cardstock. You could always back it with another piece of cardstock if you wanted it to have a little more heft. I don't think I will, so let's move on. I'm just going to cut some foam tape here. Oh. <laughs> and send all my tools flying. That <laughs> I guess we'll keep that in, won't we? Okay, I'm going to <laughs> try to cut this. Now, if you had something like fun foam, you could just cut a whole panel and that is obviously a much cheaper product, but I, you know, I don't spend money foolishly on other things, but I will go out all in on adhesive. You know, that's, uh, yeah, that's my weakness. I'm an over adhesive. So now my panel can have a little pop up on the card and I wanted it to pop up on here because I want that shadow there. In fact, you know what? I should just trim this here. Let me bring my paper trimmer back. I think I'll cut it at three and a half. Right, that makes sense. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a nice little map. Three and a half by, if this is four, it would be four and a half. See how good I am at math? Oh my gosh. My math skills are really, really something to be lauded. Okay. And now I have a nice panel. Did I do that right? I did. See how pretty that is? It's kind of hard to see with this, but all right, let's move on. I will score note card here. This is again 11 inches by four and a quarter and I'll score it right at five and a half and it will be a top folding USA2 card. Someone asked me in a live recently why I do so many top folding and I think I just like the orientation of portrait. It's uh you know this reminds me of a print page right a magazine page like it's taller than it is wider and I have a graphic design history that's been my primary job and I think because I've worked in magazine design for so many years I love this orientation also if you have a card that is oriented that way it's just going to make sense all right I'm going to tape this closed because it pops up while I'm working and I want it when, when you have a simple card anything to hedge the bet of whether or not you're going to get your pieces on straight is a good thing. I also want to show you something that I do now. The glass mat is new to the studio. I mean, I guess I've been working on a glass mat now for at least six weeks, but things slip and I have been getting into the habit of bringing in my grip mat just to hold everything in place. Now here's the thing. I may actually want to pop that up to pop that up too. Oh, I love this so much. It's so simple. It's so simple, but again, elegant, beautiful. You know what? I think we're just gonna pop this right down onto the panel. So let me grab my tape and I'll just put some tape runner on the back. Now, of course, you could, you could pop this up too. I'm just trying to keep it a little bit simpler. So, you know, just a little, just a little tape runner here. Ooh, it's getting stuck on my fingers. Maybe a little on the corner there, there. Yeah, that's probably good. It'll hold it down. And now I'll place that right in the center. Did I get that off a little? I think I cut my cardstock a little bit off. Wait a second, let me, let me double check. I mean, no, that looks really good. We're going for it. We're popping that down onto the card. All right, I trimmed just a little bit off, but I think this will be fine. I think my card, uh, the three by four card might not be perfectly three by four. I'm making this way too long. This needs to be simple. Okay, okay. Putting it on that. And honestly, a card like this doesn't need anything else. This is a beautiful thinking of you. Look at that. All the work has been done. You've got that lovely little greeting in there, right? It's so simple. You don't need anything else. You made this with the kit, done and done, moving on. For the next card, I have, I, I'm feeling this pattern paper. Like I, I am feeling this. This is like the best stenciling I'll never do. You know what I mean? Anyway, I wanna show you this. If you've never done this before, or if you wonder like, what do I do when I have a die that's nestled in? Well, of course you could keep them together if you like, but what I do is I take my little beetle snips and I just 
release. And even though it's in there kind of tight, it will, as long as your little points can get in there, it'll work. You'll get the snip, you'll get the loosen, and that's how you're gonna go ahead and release it like that. And then you can twist the rest out or just keep clipping. Now what I like to do is I come in where the pointies are, pinch and hold and twist and wipe them down. I know I could do this on a Swiffer cloth, but I only have one left. I have to go to the grocery store to get one. Twist, that's just so you don't poke yourself while you're working and get blood on your project, which is fine if you know, you're know you using red, but if you're not using any red, people are gonna wonder what you're doing in that craft room. I'm going to go ahead and do some cutting here. So I'm gonna cut out a few happy wishes from white cardstock, and I'm going to cut my shadow layer from the smoke. So let me get those cut and then we can build this card. I keep my machine on a rotating design board from Totally Tiffany. It's really nice for not having to lift and this is one of the things I get asked most about. It's basically a glorified Lazy Susan, but I love it. All right, I'll go ahead and repeat the process for cutting out three happy wishes so I can build up some dimension. I am going to use a little bit of spray glue off camera to put spray on the backs of two of these so I can glue them onto, actually, no, I want to do these two. Um, it doesn't really make a difference, but uh, that way I can build up some dimension and then pop it onto the panel. So let me do the spraying off camera. Then I'll bring in my, oh, I like to call these my mucky tweezers, just so that I don't get my good Simon tweezers all mucky. And then I just kind of drop it down wiggle it into place. I really like spray glue for how quick it is, but it's not as forgiving as like a liquid glue might be. So let me grab the next layer. But these little chunkier dies are kind of easy to line up. So let's get you here like that. And if it's not perfect, you know what? No one's going to call you up and say, hey, that card you sent? Mm, yeah, I want to talk about the layered die cuts. They were a little wonky. All right, this looks great. Now I can do liquid glue on this one or just get another bit of spray glue. So let me pop this whole friend back into the box and we'll add more spray. And we're just going to place it right onto the shadow. And this should be pretty easy to line up. It has a nice generous shadow layer to frame out all of that. Isn't that cute? Now this is where liquid glue is nice. Although look, that's letting me move it a little over. And I'm going to take one of my bricks and press. I need to take a crop from this paper. Let me just grab a die really quick so I don't mess up the size. All right, I've cut down a piece of the floral here, let's see, like that. But I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do a landscape card like that because I think that would be really nice and I've got my happy wishes stacked up onto the gray and I'll set this aside and I'll go ahead and cut this out. I put some Simon Says Stamp foam squares. These are the thicker ones. There's two lofts, one are thinner, one are thicker. And I took this and just cut a panel slightly larger so that I could have the thinnest little accent mat. Isn't that cute? So I think, you know, maybe all I'll do, oh, I always hate to see the, I don't want to put too much tape down because I don't want to, I could do this with liquid glue too, but we'll just add a little tape and then it doesn't, I guess it doesn't really matter which side we do it on because we can flip it. But then we're going to have just the nicest little frame of gray. Oh, come on now. I know I can do this on our flowered piece. Like that. Does that look good? Eh, it's a little off. But you know what? I think that's going to be just lovely. So just a little, right? Just a little. And now I'll go ahead 
but I did get some on there. If you ever get tape on your pieces, just take an adhesive eraser and rub that off. Now I'll put some foam on the back of this so this piece can pop up on my card. I'm using the same Nina Solar White Classic Crest, but I have dipped into my own stash now. And this is going to be a portrait oriented card. So here you score it right at four and a quarter. Like that. Fold and press. My foam tape on the back and I'll take this off. Wait, is that the, I always double check, there you go. I can't tell you how many times I have assembled a card upside down and uh, well it's it happens oh isn't that pretty take the backers off of the foam squares then I'll get my good tweezers the ones that I don't use with spray glue <laughs> you got to be very mindful right I don't I don't want to do that and I'll just put a little liquid glue on here like that little little beads just to give it a little float time, a little wiggle room. Okay, this is Connect Glue. And we'll just pop you right in the center, like that. And this is very, I, I don't even think I need to bring in my ruler because this is kind of a wonky little sans serif face, but I think it's easy to line up and see where it's at. Oh, it's so cute. Now I can add, I don't need anything else on this, but let me grab my little, uh, Studio Katia Majestic, which is a, just a nice clear sequin that I'm almost out of. We'll go ahead and create an arrangement. I think I'll just do this little cluster three and three. I didn't want to cover up too much of that flower. So let's add our sequins. I'll dab a glue. that. Just kind of press that down. Come around to here. This is really just sort of an accent of shimmer, right? It's it's neutral. Boop. That's why I love the silver trans... Oh, they're not translucent. Well, they're kind of... They're a little see-through at times. Well, maybe these ones are, but I like the silver because it just is shine without being in your face on a, on a pattern. And that's the finished card. Isn't that cute? Little shine when you tip it. Happy wishes. Look at that pattern paper. I mean, and you've got a whole pad. I've got this much left over. I could have just split it right in half to make two cards. How simple is that? All right, we're starting out great. Let's see what happens next. For the next card, I have to dive into this set because I think this is so beautiful. I've got my Tide Pool here. And I am going to pull in a couple more inks that I have from my own collection, and that is some marine and some lilac. I have an idea. It might, it might work. We'll see. But I am going to stamp this and do some emboss resist. And I'm going to try this out for the first time because I've never used distress embossing ink. But I am going to emboss it with clear powder so that I can create this little image. Now, I have to show you something that I do have uh, that is part of my stamp and die collection. These nested round heart dies, I am fairly certain that the largest one will cut out that friend. Now, there are, we always sell coordinating dies for the stamps, and I will have the coordinating die set linked below, but this is just a lucky stroke that I have this, so I think I am going to be cutting something out today. Let me get set up for stamping. All right, I'm gonna place this right in the center. And we're going to go ahead and pick it up, reposition that nicely, and I will prime this with my hand just by going over it a little. There's always a coating on brand new stamps, so they get more conditioned over time, right? I am going to add some anti-static powder just to remove static and oil. Now, here we go. I've never used this. It surely looks like an embossing pad, so I'm going to go ahead and ink this up. Now, of course, this is a larger stamp, so I want to make sure that I tap all around. I'm going to 
bring this down and I'm going to grab my little Stampin' Bug, my little press tool that just lets me transfer. And I'm going to ink it a second time too, just to make sure. But again, put it back in the same place. Beauty of the Misty. Oh, I can totally see it there. So it's, there's ink, right? We've got it. We'll see. This is such a cute little pad. All right. And transfer. Now I'm going to grab my paper catch. But this looks beautiful. And I'm just going to sprinkle on. Well, you know what would look kind of cool though? No, I'm going to. This is. We might try something different with the distress glaze. But right now, I just want to throw on some white powder. I just want to see. I want to see. Like that. Okay. Or this is not white, it's clear. Now you can see that. See that there? Oh, that did a good job. Good job, Distress Embossing Cube. Oh my. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. Funnel this back in. That. Wipe up extra powder. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get my heat tool warmed up and melt this. You know what I might do though? I've been doing this lately where I just kinda hold it down flat like this because what happens is it kind of, the glass kind of works in conjunction and makes it really nice for heating, so. I love that you can see it on camera. That I wasn't expecting, but now you can see the shine. See that? Ooh, that did a good job. All right, let me get some blender brushes and we can do some ink blending. Gonna start out with Tide Pool and I'm gonna grab a little ink here. And actually, I'm gonna see here, I have a little, a little scrap bin that I keep now with cheaper cardstock that I don't worry if I just really wanna get a vibe for the color. And I'm just going to come in from the top and start blending the tide pool. Like that. Oh, that's going to be pretty. Mm, subtle and pretty. And you can see how the ink resists. The next color, which is marine. I'm just going to wipe my brush off on the paper towel that I keep just to make sure I was using something a little darker. I don't really clean my brushes. I just wipe them off, but I only use my Simon brushes with dye inks. So whether it's Simon inks or uh, Tim Holtz Distress. But now we're going to bring in that blue in the center like that. Okay. Just create a a soft little blend and then go back over with what's ever on this brush kind of blend those out I'm going to take my little cloth here and just wipe over any pooled ink that's on there and then the last color is going to be the lilac so I'm going with analogous colors and analogous just means colors that follow on the rainbow. They are in the same order as you're going around. Analogous colors always work together because of the color spectrum. All right. And now I'll just come up from the bottom or from the side here. Like that. It's very pretty. I'm going to wipe a little of that off. And then again, go over that transition area. Like that. Just keep working it with your brush until you get the look that you like. And then take a lint-free cloth and wipe off the excess. Isn't that pretty? And so the clear powder traps that beautiful white cardstock below. Before I uh, put this away. I wanted to show you something that I recently started using. It's a Hero Arts scrubber block and I will take my Simon Says Stamp Ultra Clean 
give a little spritz when I want to do the final clean. Like I normally just wipe them down with my stamp chamois or my tidy towel. But if you're putting it away for good and you want to give it a great clean, these scrubber blocks are approved to work both on red rubber cling as well as the photopolymer stamp. So now it's clean and I can put it away. Look at that. The largest die from that set will cut this out perfectly. And again, this is a happy accident, right? I, <laughs> I have the dies. So I'm going to use them. So often when I work with the kit, you know, I don't have the coordinating dies. That is not part of the kit because, you know, dyes, the metal is expensive. But when you have something that will work, it's a bonus. All right, I'll cut that out. And there is my little heart element for my card. All right, let's move on. I totally forgot to use my hot hands for embossing. I had them off. They were covered. They were covered underneath my stamp set. Okay, hot hands, we didn't forget about you. We love you. Let me figure out what would be a nice greeting for this. And actually... A little thank you friend or a happy birthday. Gosh, I don't know. Or do I want to do something more simple like thinking of you? I am torn. I am torn. But I think I am going to do this on gray cardstock, some of the smoke, with uh, some white powder. So let me let me go ahead and stamp out one of these greetings and then we'll trim it out for the card. Here we go. And there we go. Love it. All right, let me grab a die to cut this out. I want to incorporate the whole word and have happy be centered and birthday. So I think I'm going to have to use a larger, come up just a little bit here, of my sentiment labels from Simon. These are, they come in different widths, so you can figure out what you need. Let me cut that out. While I have this here, I'm also going to notch the end. If you ever wonder what those notches are for, they are to help you cut a perfect little notch in, and I'm terrible at this with scissors, and I don't even mind if this is a little crooked, but it's so nice to have that die. So when I cut that out, it will have the little notched banner edge. So now I have, oh, that cut really nicely, and I'll just cut that off right there on the edge. So this is definitely a little more involved, right? Sometimes, you know, you just, you gotta do that. And I know I'm gonna do some more stamping, of course, because, well, you know, the stamp set is phenomenal. So this is fun to start out like this, having the die, total fluke, loved that. And now we'll add you. Okay, again, get my reverse tweezers, like that. I am going to do liquid glue. Well, I don't even I don't even need these. I can see this kind of with my with my eyes and hands. Center, top, bottom, side, side, and pop that down like that. That's pretty even, right? That looks good. And we will add our greeting. Again, with this one, I think I will bring in my T-square just in case, just in case. You just, and again, this glue just gives you a little bit of wiggle room before you completely commit to the placement. I do want my greeting to pop out of the panel like that. I don't want it to be, there we go. Let's just bring this very quickly to the side, press and make sure that is straight. See how that works? then I know by pressing this here and here that my greeting is straight on the card. Oh, very cute. Let me grab just a few sequins to finish this out. To finish this card off, because of all the purple and the blues, I chose a sea or confetti sequin. This is actually called Crystal Clear from Studio Katia, but it has a really cool sort of changing iridescence to it, and I love that. And I will add those. Boop. Yeah, they shift depending on how the color goes, and I love that. So this is a little more involved, right? But you know, sometimes, well, sometimes you're gonna do that. Let's get you here, a little boop. Boop, and boop. Actually, I could probably 
push that a little bit like that. And you go like that. And that is the finished card project. So it's kind of cute, right? It's kind of fun, a little different. But also, I mean, it's it's still very clean and simple, but isn't that fun with just that little bit of shine? Again, I did have that lovely dye already here, but I love how this turned out. All right, let's move on. For the next card, I want to do some straight up stamping. So I have my Tide Pool, but I am bringing back the marine and lilac and I'm going to bring in one other green for my greenery. Now I'm not sure if I want to do a horizontal card or a vertical card but like I feel like I've, I've already done I, I, I gotta I gotta do a horizontal card so here's what we're gonna do. I've got my piece of cardstock and again this is Nina Solar White Classic Craft Stripe same paper but I did pull this from my stash okay and I'm going to take this very first little friend and I'm gonna take this stamp off as well, just so I can visualize the placement, okay, to make sure we're about the right size up. And I'm gonna hold you, get you out of there for now. I'll bring that back, but first I wanna stamp my greenery. So let's pick this up, okay. Push it into place, prime it. And I'm going to stamp Limelicious this up like that okay and bring that cute little leaf down like that pick it up and I'm going to stamp it again like this okay we are gonna do some good old-fashioned simple stamping today and I'm just gonna position this little friend to be I don't mind if it floats a little bit, that would be fine too. Because what I think I'm going to do here is this is going to be the marine color. We're gonna go from left to right, tide pool, marine in the middle. And yes, I'm doing blue flowers. I'm, uh, well, I'm on a, I'm on a color jam right now. We're, 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 we're staying there, inspired by tide pool. Okay, so let's ink this stamp up. Bring this down and blue flower commencing, or marine flower. That's, pr oh, that's so pretty. I'm gonna do another one like this. Now, I'm not doing any kind of fancy stamping, right? I'm just straight up making a panel, and sometimes that just feels so good. I'm going to line up the next stamp. Figure out my greenery, and the best, you know, I can just do this, right? Put my magnet here, sorry, head's in the way and figure out this stem. Actually, this is where it's also pretty helpful, let me show you here, to have this Simon Says Stamp Ruler because I can, I can bring it right here. Excuse my head, <laughs> I just pulled my hair back nice and tight. And that way I know where this guy can go, right? Like that. And I think I am going to do him twice. And here's what's crazy. You can actually pick that stamp up with the ruler in place. Now I'm gonna get that out of the way, of course. But that way, right, he's in place and ready to be stamped. Inking him up like that. Press in the corner and transfer. Okay. Oh, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Straight enough. I think this is gonna be cute. Okay, and I like that. All right, so now I have that little friend in place. Very cute. I love the simple graphic design of these florals. All right. Oh, I'm getting a little, <laughs> getting a little wild here. I actually did put some lotion on my hands uh, in between taking a break. I probably should not have. That's why we're not embossing right this second. Lotion. Oh, look at that. What did I transfer there? Well, I don't know. Get that off. <sighs> some kind of, some kind of schmutz. Oh, but I like, I like the float. Okay. I'm going to do that. And again, transfer like that. 
bring that down and stamp. Hit it one more time. So I didn't want any of these to overlap, but I did a pretty good job on the spacing. Okay. Okay. And that way we have these beautiful, cool tones for our flowers. Make sure you're in the right place, stamp and transfer. Oh, I think that's really cute. Like that and press. So that is the panel. I think it's really fun. And now what I'm going to do is trim this down ever so slightly, right? Because I want it to be, I didn't quite get it centered perfectly. So let me grab a die to trim that down and then I can stamp my greeting. I just trimmed this down to four inches by five and a quarter, just so that this could all be a little more centered. So I think I will do just because it's a little chunkier, right? And here I can really visualize that on the card and press it up against. Although now on my side to side, let's just come over a little bit. Like, so now I'm pretty straight. I can close up. Yeah, it's, it's a little off. I think we're fine. Pick that up. And then I can also look on here and it does look like I'm right on the grid line. Let me powder this up and we'll get this inked up. I'm gonna use Simus's Stamp Antique Gold with, well, no, I want silver. Hold on, that's better. And it is a beautiful silver just because the, you know, the colors are cool. And sometimes I associate cool side of the rainbow with silver. And I think that will work just fine. Let's get that out of the way. And let's transfer just because. And that up it's probably fine I don't think I need to do it again so I'm not going to I will just wipe this very quickly do a cursory clean sprinkle it on right there oh it's gonna be so cute so simple right just because okay just because, oh, I do like that. All right, I'm actually going to just try to flatten this out a little. I'm gonna go pop this in my favorite book while I prep my note card. Isn't that cute how it has a nice little, uh, little tiny, what do you call it? Um, frame, <laughs> it has a tiny frame. Now I should have put a little foam tape in here. It's a little warped down. So I actually may, this is what I've done before, like sometimes when I see a tiny dip down, and that is because I didn't let it flatten long enough. Sometimes if I'm quick and nimble, I can take a piece of this and let's see, I'm gonna see if I can get it. It's just ever so, ever so slightly dipping down here. So I'm gonna do the insertion, it's like I'm, it's like I'm doing, some, well, boy, I don't know. Come on. There we go. Look at that. Go. And squeeze. Oh, I did it. It now is supported. It feels so good. I just inserted uh, something. Well, I don't have a surgical term for that, but to finish out this card, I'm, you know, I'm not very good at this, uh, but I got a jelly roll pen right here and I've been making sure that I can use it. And I think I'm just going to add a few little lines of white to the best of my ability. <laughs> this is something I've wanted to work to try and practice because I see people adding the little details and I just think it really does, um, add a lot to your little stamped images, right? So I can do that. I can do that. One of these guys here. And maybe a couple dots like that. Maybe I should do a dot there and a dot there. It's kind of cute though, right? It adds a little. 
I probably should do one over here. So let's go with, uh, getting a little nervous. Like that. I think it's cute. I mean, it's not bad. And then I'll do a little friend in there. Little dots. Yeah. Maybe, maybe one on the outside too, like this. I don't know. Like that. Actually, though, you know what would be cute? What if I just put little little dots um, into these guys? Oh, that's cute, right? I like that. Let's come around here. Dot. 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 There we go. And that's the finished card project. So, again, this is something new for me. I've been trying to do it more and more. But what do you think? I mean, it's, again, so simple. This is stamping. There's no die cutting, although I'm sure, like I said, I'm sure there's some sort of coordinating die. But that is our finished card. I kind of love how it turned out. We got one more to do. So let's, let's do it. For the final card today, I want to take the florals from this and maybe some of the other swoop de doos haven't decided completely. And I'm gonna stamp them and I am gonna throw on some of this salvage patina and we are gonna see what happens by making a pattern. So, all right, let's pick this up. Oh, let's try getting this out of the way for a second. There we go. Pick all your stamps up like that. Oh, we didn't get that one. We better grab you. Did I get you? There we go. I'm actually gonna reposition this just ever so slightly. Now, the glaze is gonna kind of work similar to like an embossing, so we're going to blend over this and we're going to see what happens. It could be a hot mess and you will never, see, this video may never see the light of day. But let me get the cardstock prepped with some powder and then we'll ink it up with the embossing ink. In the corner, bring it down and press to transfer. Okay. I'm going to lift that up. I'm sure paper will come up with it. That does look pretty darn good though. I think I'll just do one more quick pass. Light taps, maybe more on the bigger florals, but you know, we'll just do it all. And press. Now, I'm going to keep this closed while I get this open. And I am going to sprinkle on the glaze. Now, this is more of a translucent kind of thing. So you're seeing all this color now and you're thinking, whoa. But I think as it melts, oh, that's actually, I did good. Look at that. goodness now look at how glazy and pretty that is I kind of love that I wasn't I, I wasn't sure what to expect with the color but I actually think that's really cute all right let me let me grab some ink here because I have an idea I am gonna start in the center with a little of the tide pool which is if you a little kit color all right so and I I don't know I don't know what's gonna happen I can't, oh, here's my little tap off. I just wanna see. See, the tide pool is so similar, and all I'm gonna do here, very light-handed, okay? Very light-handed. I am going to blend around the little areas, very lightly, like that, okay? I don't think I like that at all. You know what, let me, Ooh, maybe that is what was needed. Don't give up. I think in the words of the great Peter Gabriel song, until you finish. That's actually funky as can be. Now we come up here like that. Very interesting. I'm setting this aside. I may do something with it, but I actually wanted to try something else. Remember how I said I wasn't going to take these off yet? That's because I want to try to get them a little closer. Okay, I'm going to get them in there. And we are gonna try something that may or may not work. May or may not work. I think I'm gonna do a multicolor. Now, I'm not great at this. I really am not, but let's try it. If we're starting at the top, oops, let's see. If we're starting at the top, we're starting with a uh, tide pool, okay? So that means I have to start here. And what I'm gonna do is ink this up like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my brush 
and just tap a little bit in there to soften it. Let's just try this. Let's try this. This might be prettier. Okay. And we're going to do this a few times to get that good look that we're going for, right? So heavier up top. And then just a little tapping off with the brush. Just tap it. It'll be easy peasy and breezy. Okay. And actually, I'm going to press that a little more right there. There we go. And you could even do it a third time if you wanted to. I think I will because I want it to be, you know, as saturated as possible. All right. Tap, 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 tap. And press. And then don't clean, right? We're not going to clean this because we want to leave whatever is on, on. Although I'm going to wipe that. I think this is going to be better. I don't I think I was trying to cash a creative check. My body wasn't ready to write, you know, and that does happen. Now we're going to take, now this is going to be a little trickier for me because I don't have a small pad to do this with, but we're going to come in the middle and we're going to, well, you know what? How about I just do that? Okay. And then I can wipe off most of the blue like that. That doesn't need to be on there because that's going to, fade into our purple. Okay. Now, uh, let's just, let's just go a little tap in there like that to lighten it. Let's bring it down and see. I think that's going to be pretty. I should have softened it out a little bit. Uh, mm, like that. Ooh, my paper was off a little. Oh no. Oh, this is turning into a hot mess. Let's, you know what? We got to flip it. When a problem comes along, you must flip it. Flip it good. Okay, coming on the back, clean it off again. And let's start over. We are back to where we were. So now let's try this. Okay, we're going to ink up the blue. Wipe it off here. Wipe it off here. And just tap it mostly off from there. And let's see what happens if we're lined up this time. Are we lined up? We are. There we go. That's what we're looking for. All right. Much better. And again, I always forget that you can just, you know, wipe off the excess like that. Nobody's really going to notice it because we're going to go over it with purple and press. All right. There we go. And now we'll just focus on the purple. Purple, purple, purple. Oh, this is, you know what? I think I like this better already. And also I'm just kind of sweeping off that, making sure we're lined up and press. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I think this is actually looking really cool. And the thing is when I do these kit unboxings, I really don't, I really don't know what's going to happen, right? I just, I just play. And I think, I think this look is actually really cool. Now, here's the thing. If I want to go back in and deepen up any of that, I can. But sometimes I actually do want something to look like it was stamped. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Like, I don't want it to be super perfect, right? I want it to look like there's some craft going on and that is pretty cool. I may, let's see here. That's where the Marine is. Let me see. That's why keeping things in the misty is so cool. Cause you can just go right in there like that. Okay. And I can see, will I get it better? Will it look better? It won't really matter because I actually have the ability to do that. I don't know. I think that's actually really cool. So that's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Eh. Yeah. I don't want to ink blend over this, right? I don't because I think, I think what I want to do, oh, you know what I need? I think I need a misty sticky pad. I do. I've never used this. I'm very excited. Okay. I'm going to put in my sticky pad like this. And I guess... We'll just, we just want to hold it. We don't want it to move. 
or is that right? Do I want to go, you know what, hold on. Let me make sure this is right because I have no idea. It has to be in the center. How do we center this? Um, one, two, six squares from the bottom. Yeah, probably. Here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm going to take this little friend, this long squiggly wiggly. If I, and I'm gonna test this. If I pick this up off here, I'm gonna stamp this in gray. I guess, <laughs> yeah, okay, pick it up. But see, I wanna be stamping this at the exact same angle, so what's gonna happen when I flip it? Will it, will it? Well, it's not quite in the same, okay. And that's okay, because then I can just move. Maybe I should do it this way. All right, let's start there and try this. Okay, picking you up. Oh, the whole sticky came with it. I love it. Okay, now that's going to stamp there. Then what happens if I flip it? I don't think my image is centered and that's okay. We'll just move it because the thing that I want is I just want to make sure that the angle is the same. This is getting far too involved. Is that going to be close enough? I think so, right? I know some of you might be saying, Kathy, why are you doing this? And I have to ask myself that before I do it. Why am I doing this? because I think it could be cute once it's trimmed, okay? We're just inking it up with gray flannel, very nice neutral gray color, any light color would do. Um, and we're just transferring that ink like that. Lift. I think that's really cute. Okay, I don't, I do need to wipe this down for right now because what I need to do and I don't, I'm not gonna stamp it again. I like that stampy, stampy look, but I'm going to need to bring this down, bring my paper, or bring my paper up. How about that? Getting closer, down one more. But you can kind of see how it's working, right? I may have just skipped one, but let's try it. Let's get lined up, we're straight, top. That's pretty close. What do we think? I like it. I'm doing it. Ink, 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 ink. <laughs> this is turning into a much longer card project, but you know, it's all fine. We've got enough. I think we have enough ink. We didn't go all the way down. Now is not the time, Kathy, to be stingy. I'm going to bring it down and press. Like that. Look at how cute that is. Oh, Kathy, you did it. You did it. I created a little diagonal frame. I'm very proud of this right now. Okay, I'm going to come up with a greeting and we'll finish this card. Many twists and turns until we get to our, look, there's our, there's our, oops. It's all good. Just keep with it. Keep trying different things. All right, so here again, we're going to have that subtle margin of smoke cardstock like that. And I went ahead off camera and I stamped sending you a happy hello from the kit. And I actually think position wise, it is going to have to cut off one of the little flowers, but that's because, you know, you don't know when you're doing it. And I hate to cover it up, but there's got to be equal balance for the greeting. So I want this to be, see that margin on both sides? I'm preserving it because it's going to make my brain feel better. Okay, and then I'll just press this up against and make sure that's straight and press. Now, if I had known that I was gonna put my greeting there, I could have, you know, whatever, put other things in. But I think I will grab those same sequins because they're, well, or do I want plain silver on this? This has such a fun opalescence. Let me get a position for these sequins. I know this might seem like an unusual mishmash for me, but two, two, one, one, and three. I kind of dig it. I don't think I will boop on every one because that will be annoying. Um, but I can tell you stories boop, in between. How does that sound? Boop. Sometimes it's just, it's just by feel, right? And all I'm doing here is kind of using some of the open space for the sequins, but you know, are there rules? Sure and no. You know what I mean? You can kind of do whatever you want. You want to spatter them everywhere? You spatter them everywhere. That's what I'm doing. Boop. 
a little too much glue there, but also I love the color of these. Boop. And the last one, boop. And that is the finished card project. This might be my favorite card. I don't, <laughs> like, starting out with, you know, just remember, I don't know everything all the time when I start out, right? It can turn into something that's just like, eh. And that is not to impugn this product at all. It looked so pretty before I ink blended. Note to self. But this card turned out exactly as I could have hoped. <laughs> really had no idea where I was going, but that's the finished card project. Let's take a look at all the cards together. And here's a look at the five cards we created today in this video. And I actually, I love when there's like a theme here and there's a theme here. I only used this cool die once and I feel like there's just so much more I could have done, but you know, I go in a direction how the spirit moves me. So let's take a look, a little closer look at card one. Again, this was just using the cards, right? To turn this into a beautiful, elegant card. I love how this turned out. Then we have our happy wishes, again, using that gorgeous pattern paper, matting it with the smoke gray, and then repeating that mat. See, anytime you can create a little element of repetition on a card design, it's a good way to just say these things go together. So by having the same background here, and the same thin mat, it works really nicely. Plus there's grays in this pattern paper, so it all ties together. And of course, a little shine with the silver confetti style sequins. Then we went here and I, you know, again, very simple. This could have been cute with some sort of embossed panel behind it, but I wanted to keep it very simple using that Tide Pool ink and then just picking another two inks from my collection right? And then using the smoke cardstock to create a simple birthday card. Then we have this little friend, which is just stamping, right? It should say just stamping, but you know, it, very simple. Again, making a pattern out of the stamps that I had, drawing a few little details, something I'm trying to get better at, and a little silver embossed greeting. And then the last card, I really, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like this and believe it or not, this are my two favorites. I'm always curious to know what your favorites are in these videos. Um, let me know in the comments. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Um, you're never shy to tell me what you love, but this one I think is very, very fun as well. So that concludes today's video. If you wanna become a subscriber to the Simon Says Stamp Card Kit, I have a link in the description box. Be sure to check that out. There's no long-term commitment you can cancel at any time, and it is so fun to have this kit delivered to your doorstep every month. And as you can see by the cards I create, you never really know where you're gonna go, and I feel like it challenges you creatively to play, have fun, try on different styles that you normally might not, and then put your own creative spin on things. All the other links can be found on my blog. The list is long, so I will have a link also to my blog post where you can see these photos and more information about the kit. Please hit that subscribe button and I will see you back here with another card project soon.